What are some of your favorite John Marston moments from the Red Dead series? For many, they were the ones where John had his back against the wall and still managed to come out swinging. For this list, I'll be revisiting 10 times John Marston went beast mode during the main story missions of both RDR1 and RDR2. Consider this your heads up if you haven't played through both games, as I will be getting into major plot points from each. Let's get started! My name's John Marston. Well, that's good, everybody. At the number 10 spot on today's list, we have Surviving a Wolf Attack. The second mission of Red Dead Redemption 2 involves the player joining Javier as the pair go searching for John in the snow-covered mountains of Amberino. Arthur and Javier stumble across John's horse, which has been gutted by a pack of wolves, but moments later they find out John has survived his close encounter with the wolves in freezing temperatures. Upon finding him, fans of the series learn that it was this very wolf attack which left John with that iconic scar across his face. That's quite a scratch you got there. Never thought I'd say this, but good to see you, Arthur Morgan. Even though we don't see this fight, the aftermath of what it does to John's face tells us that it was vicious and he had to fight tooth and nail in order to survive. At number nine today, it's shooting up Fort Mercer with a Gatling gun. The final few missions of Red Dead Redemption's first act involve John acquiring the parts needed to construct a Gatling gun. The plan is to use the gun to assault Bill Williamson's hideout at Fort Mercer. With a little help from snake oil salesman Nigel West Dickens, John is able to get inside the fort while hiding inside the back of a wagon. It reeks of miracles back here! Thank God! And when the moment is right, John pops out of the wagon and guns down the fort's occupants. He then clears out the fort with the help of the local sheriff's department before hopping back onto the Gatling gun again to fend off Bill's reinforcements. Despite the fact that this isn't where John ultimately catches up to Bill, the game's first act nevertheless came to a memorable conclusion with this banger of a mission. Next up is rescuing Uncle from the Skinner Brothers. When the construction of John's barn at Beecher's Hope is complete, it is understandably a cause for celebration. It's calls for a drink. But things quickly go south when John and Charles awaken from their drunken slumber to find out Uncle has been kidnapped by a group of backwoods murderers. They sneak up to their hideouts, fearing the worst, and what they discover is only marginally better than the worst case scenario. Uncle is being cooked alive over an open fire. A gunfight ensues, and John provides cover for Charles while he helps Uncle to safety. John slaughters waves of Skinners in the process before the trio make it out of the woods alive. Hey John, maybe next time check the Zillow ratings for the quality of the neighborhood before buying a piece of property? We're gonna be safe here, John. Nope. Number seven, entering Chuparosa. In a scene that feels right at home in an old Clint Eastwood movie, John sends a message to the inhabitants of this Mexican town that he is not to be trifled with. Upon his arrival, some of the locals taunt him since he's an American who has ventured south of the border. They start by establishing that they know more English than he knows Spanish, but then they attempt to demean him even further by taking his hat and asking for his boots. John seizes this opportunity and guns down the three men where they stand before reclaiming his hat. Cold-blooded, yes, but you can't say they didn't ask for some form of retaliation, even if Landon Ricketts didn't approve. What a great way to improve border relations. In at number six, we have surviving a bear attack twice. In RDR2's epilogue, John joins Sadie on one of her bounty hunting missions in Tall Trees. They find their target, and he's hiding in a cabin from what he appropriately calls a monster. Before John and Sadie can figure it out, the bear barges in and John is pinned underneath it. He fights desperately to get out from under the beast and manages to stay alive until he fights it off with Sadie's assistance. And since one encounter with a bear wasn't enough, John again finds himself face to face with one in tall trees, this time in RDR1 as he's trying to save his son Jack. The boy was trying to prove he could be a man like his father, and he's got his work cut out for him. Number five, confronting his fellow gang members after being left for dead. When what is billed as the Vandalin Gang's final train robbery goes awry, John is left to die on the side of the railroad tracks by Dutch and Micah after getting shot. They obviously thought he wasn't coming back from his injury, but he proves them wrong by dragging himself back to camp while wounded before confronting the man who had been a father figure to he and Arthur for years. Then, he tries to help Arthur escape amidst the hail of gunfire from pursuing Pinkerton agents. Tragically, the final moments of what was already a physically and emotionally taxing sequence see John saying goodbye to his brother-in-arms as Arthur prepares to face his demise. Gutsy stuff indeed. You're my brother. I don't know. For the fourth spot on today's list, it's John taking on the Laramie Gang. 
The opening missions of RDR2's epilogue establish that Abigail is less than thrilled with her husband's violent tendencies, but when a family of troublemakers attacks Mr. Getty's farm in the hopes of forcing him off the land, there's nothing Abigail can do to stop John from doing what he does best. He walks up to the Laramie Ranch in the middle of the night, picks a fight with all of them, and starts gunning them down one by one. Keep in mind the only help he had on this mission was from two ranch hands who didn't have much experience in gunfights, and the fact that he strikes the pose from the RDR-1 cover art seals the deal on this one as one of John's most epic moments. The third slot on today's list goes to saving Miss McFarlane. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. Bonnie is the character who helps John get back into action after he gets shot at the opening of the original Red Dead Redemption. So when a gang of outlaws capture her and threaten to hang her, he is understandably incentivized to do what he can to save her life. He arrives to Tumbleweed to find Bonnie is already at the end of a hangman's rope, and he has to quickly fight his way through the outlaws who are entrenched in the town and save her before she strangles to death. What the hell took you so long? At number two, it's confronting Micah. The final mission of RDR2 features John riding up Mount Hagen with Charles and Sadie to confront the man who betrayed his old gang and contributed to Dutch turning against him. His job gets a lot harder when his companions are wounded, but that doesn't stop him from single-handedly tearing through Micah's new gang members en route to a showdown with the rat himself. He dodges a flurry of Micah's bullets, then manages to talk at least a little sense into Dutch before delivering the final shots to Micah. I've never seen anyone play this sequence without putting every bullet they can into this scumbag. Before revealing the top spot, there's one honorable mention on today's list, and that's bringing his family back from the undead plague and saving the world in the process. Stop biting chunks out of people. I can't put this one on the list officially, since it's from an alternate universe, that being the one established in RDR1's A Dead Nightmare expansion. But anytime someone saves the world from being overrun by the undead, that deserves at least a little recognition, right? This expansion has been listed among the best DLCs of all time, and yet still has no signs of a sequel in sight. Hey Rockstar, when is Undead Nightmare 2 releasing? The fans are ready for it. Finally at the top spot, it's sacrificing himself for Jack and Abigail. One of them machines can turn men into angels. Having done everything asked of him by Agent Ross, John was hoping to settle into a normal life with his family at Beecher's Hope. But the agent had other plans as he led an army right to John's front door with the intention of killing him. John realizes that his past has finally caught up to him and sacrifices himself in order to save his family. He opens the door, draws his weapon, and goes down fighting. I no longer wondered why they called the game Red Dead Redemption after this. It's an ending that sticks with players long after the credits roll. What did you think of today's list? Were there different moments you would have added? Would you have put them in a different order? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, try one of the videos on the end screen. Quick announcement, in case you didn't see the community post, Orange Wilson branded merchandise is available to purchase for the first time. The link to the shop is on my channel's homepage, and a variety of products are currently being offered. Shirts, hoodies, drinking glasses, phone cases, and more are all on sale. Go take a look. Thanks for watching, and until next time, make it count.